So, uh, sorry, uh, battery ran out there as I was sitting in the grass in Rittenhouse Square. Now I'm back inside, and I just wanted to make some remarks about the end of this chapter on idealism. It's just really kind of a turning point, a very important uh, milestone in the argument that uh, Russell is, is giving here. And I, I want to say maybe at this point, too, that you know, the reason I chose this book to be the entirety of, uh, of our introduction to philosophy, at least to certain aspects of philosophy, uh, metaphysics and epistemology, as opposed to other things in philosophy that we're not dealing with, is because Russell manages to hit on some incredibly important points, maybe you know, the absolute basics of uh, philosophical inquiry, the kind of problems that emerge, but he, he doesn't do it in a hodgepodge way. That is, I, I hope that what you'll see as we move from chapter to chapter, from subject to subject, is that in Russell's presentation, the subjects naturally follow from each other. That is, there's, there's a sense of, of, of an inquiry into reality here where the questions and the problems lead to each other. So you're not just sort of have different uh, philosophical topics thrown at you with no connection. And I, I think that Russell's book is incredibly good in, in that respect. I don't think we have to agree with everything he said. I hope that I've pointed out what I consider to be some of the, the flaws in, in his thinking. Uh, as much as a small thinker like me, very tiny thinker like me, can criticize a very large and important and brilliant thinker like Russell. In any case, I did want to say a couple things uh, about the, the end of this uh, chapter on idealism. Uh, and I, I just want to remind us that Russell is arguing against idealism, but on, uh, on the other hand, he has made a major concession to idealism in, in the very way that, that he begins to think about the problem of knowledge. Um, and although he's just made an argument that uh, Barclay has made all sorts of mistakes in, in, in his failure to make certain distinctions between sensations and sense data, between um, apprehending something and the thing which is apprehended, uh, he has conceded from the beginning that all we are in direct contact with in terms of knowledge is our, our, our sense data, not the things themselves. Um, for somebody who is basically, I guess, a realist like Russell, that, that's a big problem because Russell believes that there is an external world, a world of matter, physical objects, and moreover that you know we can know it, but if he concedes from the beginning that in our, at least in our knowledge of nature, of uh, things which we perceive through their sense qualities, things like um, you know, vision and, and sounds and smells and tastes and touches. I mean, to concede from the beginning that all we are really acquainted with are our sense data and not the things themselves digs in a kind of a hole, that so-called epistemological hole that I commented on earlier in the lecture. So he wants to get out of that hole. And, and how do you do that? Um, if, if you concede from the beginning that all we really know directly our sense data and, and not physical objects, not the external world. He says, it is often said, as though it were self -ev a self-evident truism, that we cannot know any, that anything exists which we do not know. That is, um, can we know of the existence of something that, uh, unless we know it? That is, can we know that, ex that it exists unless we know it? Um, it would seem that, if, again, the part of the force of Barclay's idealism is that the whole idea of matter is something that we do not know and cannot know, so we have no grounds for saying that it exists. And Russell wants to argue against that. He thinks that that statement, that we cannot know that anything exists which we do not know, is false. Uh, continues a little bit later. Again, it is by no means a truism and is in fact false that we cannot know that anything exists which we do not know. That is, this distinction between knowing something 
uh, and knowing that something exists uh, is an important distinction for Russell and his point here is that you do not have to know something to know that it exists and he supports that claim by making a certain distinction he continues the word no is here used in two different senses in its first use it is applicable to the sort of knowledge which is opposed to error the sense in which what we know is true the sense which applies to our beliefs and convictions that is to what are called judgments in this sense of the word we know that something is the case this sort of knowledge may be described as knowledge of truths. That is, this is what we would call propositional knowledge. Um, if I say and believe I know that Barack Obama is President of the United States, uh, and by the way, it is summer 2012, so he is, that is a knowledge of a truth. It is a judgment that I make uh, about the world that is, I believe that something is the case, that Barack Obama is the president of the United States. Uh, then he says, uh, in the second use of the word no, above, the word applies to our knowledge of things, which we may call acquaintance. This is the sense in which we know sense data. So this distinction between two different sorts of knowledge, one, one way we would say a knowledge of truth and the other... Um, what would you call it? Well, he says knowledge of things, um, which we may call acquaintance, although that's a little bit, it's a little bit more complicated than that, is a very important uh, distinction that Russell makes. Let, let me explain why I think so. Uh, if we take uh, his beginning position that, that all we know directly or experience directly are sense data, then we can never know uh, the external object because it's never part of our direct experience. So if I look at any, what I take to be any normal physical object, uh, all I really know are the sense data which I connect with that physical object, never the physical object as it is in itself. So I know by acquaintance the sense data, the, the colors, the shape, the, uh, the feel, the texture, the sound, the taste, whatever uh, is the content of my sense data. But I never know directly the physical object. However, I may say that the physical object exists nonetheless, even though I don't know it. Why? Well, because it's a knowledge of truth, not a knowledge, it's a, a direct acquaintance with something. Uh, in, in Russell's way of thinking things, I have no direct acquaintance with Barack Obama. I've never met him. I don't know him in, in that, that sense. I'm not acquainted with him. Well, but I, I do believe that I, that, that I know that he's the President of the United States. Well, well, what kind of knowledge is that? That's a knowledge of a truth. So if we relate that to physical objects, I, I know the sense data that I'm experiencing. I know them directly. They'll say that I'm acquainted with those sense data. But I can make a proposition that there is a physical object in the world that is the cause of those sense data that exists independently of me. And although I can never be directly acquainted with that physical object, I can know truths about it. Russell says. So right now I'm looking at this table and I'm experiencing all sorts of sense data that I associate with the table. But I can say that there is a table in my kitchen which is of certain dimensions and has uh, certain qualities. Uh, and that, that is a statement about a physical object that, that is in the world. And uh, I can say that I know it, well, not by direct acquaintance, but I can know truths about it. I can make judgments on the basis of my sense data, the things I do know directly uh, about that table. So this distinction between things that we know directly and things that we can say about the world, which are true or false, which are propositional knowledge, is an incredibly important distinction. And something that will be important in Russell's argument, especially the next uh, chapter, uh, knowledge by acquaintance and knowledge by description.